Hi everyone, um, welcome to Wigan Fan TV. This is our very, very first attempt at doing anything like this, so it's a bit of a trial run. My name's Sean Lawless and this is Matt McCauley, who uh, joins us for our very, very first show. Um, one of the main reasons why I wanted to do this and, and bring Matt in is just to bring a bit of interaction between fans, try and get some ideas and some discussions going over the next few months and, and for the rest of the season. Hopefully on a on a weekly basis we'll get different people in and we'll do match previews, match reviews, a bit of fan reaction. We might do things at, at the grounds and various things like that. Um, and we might do some things over in uh, in, in Sydney where, when I go over there, if anybody's up for that kind of thing. But um, what, we, what we're trying to do tonight is basically just a bit of a trial run, get used to this software ourselves, get a bit of interaction from, from anybody that might be watching. <laughs> this will get uploaded to YouTube later on as well. If anybody's got any questions um, for us, your comments can pop up there. So on Facebook, if you just write any comments or any questions, uh, particularly for, for Matt, and I'll introduce him a, a little bit more in just a second, please pop them through. We want as much interaction as we can possibly get. So um, one of the reasons why I've invited Matt um, as our first contributor and our first guest, and hopefully he might be a regular guest as, as we go on, um, is because he's an author and of, an author of a, of a Wigan Rugby League book. Um, so, Matt, thank you for joining us. Do you want to tell us just a little bit about um, why you chose to write a book on Wigan and, and what exactly it is about? It's, uh, hello, it's all about uh, what it means to be a Wigan fan. And as, uh, as my wife will tell you, be, being a Wigan fan takes up such a big chunk of my life that I felt it, it was quite important to get it down on paper. Um, so th that, that was why I started to do it, and it, it became a bit of a labour of love, really. Perfect. I mean, I've, I've read the book, and for anybody that, um, that might be interested in it, we are doing a competition tonight just to try and get a few more people watching this. So basically, we're going to run a competition. We'll draw it at about 10 o'clock tonight after this video. If you can like this video and share it onto your Facebook page to get more people watching, we'll do a draw at about 10 o'clock tonight, and on Monday, we'll post out a copy of Matt, Matt's book for you. Matt, the, um, the actual... Uh, the blurb on your book, uh, I reread it today and it sort of made me chuckle a little bit. Can you remember your Socrates um, line in there? Oh, I can do better than remember it. I've, I've got <laughs> it right here. Um, yeah, Socrates would have liked Rugby League. He was reputedly an argumentative, awkward and belligerent little man who enjoyed nothing better than poking at authority with a pointy stick. He'd have fitted right in. He'd probably even have made a decent hooker. But we'll never know because they poisoned him. <laughs> and I think that sets up the tone of the book um, really nicely, actually, for anybody that is interested in reading it. It's got great humour all the way through. I think you said to me the other night that you, you've ventured into uh, stand-up comedy now as well. Is that right? I have, yeah. I've been doing a bit of that too, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that definitely comes through um, in, in, in your book, Matt. I think one of the things that if anybody reads it, what they'll be able to associate with is this thing that you said about being that Wigan fan. It is a very unique thing. It's a time-considering thing. It, you know, it takes up a hell of a lot of your time, obviously. Um, but yeah. it, I remember you, you talk about going to the ground as a youngster and, and that feeling and getting that down on paper. Obviously, you, you, you enjoyed writing it, I assume? I loved writing it. it. It was like it gave me an excuse to actually delve into to what it really means to follow the Warriors. And uh, and just getting that all down on paper, it, ma it made me feel quite good about myself, to be honest. It made me feel like it wasn't a waste of time or anything. Well, it isn't. You know, that, that this is the thing. I mean, 2017 as a season uh, might have felt like a waste of time for a lot of people. But it's those seasons like 2017 that do make those seasons when you do win silver uh, worth something. And, and I think that's it, exactly what you, you sort of can capture in, in your book. Um one one thing that we, we obviously want to do throughout the season is do match previews and match reviews. There's no matches at the minute, so we can't do anything about that. Maybe we'll preview the Scholars game and the league. It's horrible. Game. Yeah, what, I mean, what do we do on a Friday night? We talk about rugby on Facebook Live instead. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's basically we're fill, trying to fill a void here. Um, so one thing we, we want to obviously discuss, I guess, is, is one of the, the main things that has taken up the last week or so um, since the new year, and that's um, McAloran, McAloran spelt wrong on there, and Anthony Gellin. 
um, leaving leaving Wigan. Um, your thoughts, first of all, on on Macalor and leaving and, and going to Catalans? It's I, I was very sad actually because he's he's such a character, you know, on the field when he's there, you can't help but feeling a little bit more kind of assured and safe that there's someone there to look after the rest of the team because yeah. you feel that's the kind of person he is. He is. I mean, he's an enforcer, isn't he? I mean, he's going to be a, mm. going to be a big miss. I mean, I, I don't know if you you saw um, the the interview that, that Phil Wilkinson um, did with um, Chris Radlinski this week. In, oh, on, yeah. You can see on the in the Wigan Observer or on the Wigan Today website, and, and Chris Radlinski explaining the decision. I think at, at the time when it was announced, there was probably a bit of a contradiction from Ian Lennigan's statement and McAlorum's statement. It almost looked like he was pushed yeah. out. Do you think it was the the right decision from from the club's point of view? First of all, I think it probably was. In retrospect, when I first heard it, I was like, "No, that's wrong. There's something desperately wrong here." But at the time, I didn't know about his dogs, and now I know about McAlorum's <laughs> dogs. I mean, yeah, seems the right thing. Yeah, I mean, he obviously came out, for anybody that, that doesn't know this story, McAlorum came out today and, and said one of the main reasons why he um, wanted to go to France rather than um, the NRL was the fact that his dogs could go over to France rather than going... It was a lot easier to get his dogs to France than it was uh, to, to Canberra or, or wherever, he, uh, wherever he might have ventured to. I mean, in, in terms of that, I, I wrote an article um, towards the back end of the year when I thought, when it was rumoured that he was going to Canberra, and I think a lot of people at that time could you know, understand if he went to the NRL. He's, he's just turned yeah. 30. It would be a nice little paycheck for him at the end of the season. You know, replaces Josh Hodgson for however however many months and, until he's back. I think there was probably an overriding element of disappointment initially when, when it was announced that it was going to another Super League club. Do you, do you agree? I, I think so, yeah. I think it's going to be awkward seeing him line up against Wigan. It won't if, feel quite right. I mean, God help the Wigan players when when they line up against <laughs> it. I mean, you know, I, I always said about McAlorum, he's one of those players who you'd love that he's in your team, but you'd hate him if he was, uh, you know, if yeah. he was a Saints player or, or a Leeds player because he's he's a mongrel. He's an absolute mongrel when it comes to uh, he being. He attacks whole forwards' elbows with his face. Is exactly. that kind of player? I mean, he is a kind of player that will take an elbow in the face for the team. <laughs> Just to get the he other team that. Out, I mean, that was <laughs> deliberate. Obviously, he was obviously <laughs> deliberate. Um, it's going to, obviously going to be strange um, seeing McAlorum line up for for another team against <laughs> us, and we'll touch on um, later in the program about how we think that that will affect the team in in terms of the line up with Lulawai, Powell, Ganson. However, you know, however you fit those pieces in into the jigsaw. But the other big departure, obviously, this week and some news developing this morning that Mr. Anthony Gellin, the man of the people, has uh, signed for New Zealand Warriors. You, you take on that? Uh, I'm glad he signed for New Zealand, to be honest, because I was a bit worried about him. I, saw, I, I had visions of him working in a zoo and, and eating <laughs> peanut. But he, he, his reasons for leaving, I think, are perfectly honourable. They're genuine reasons. And I wouldn't like to see him out of work, you know. And I'd like to see him playing rugby league again. And that's, that's the important thing. So he's, he's set up, you know, he's obviously, he's happy. Um, he's started his videos again. It's just a shame. And it really is a shame because we will miss him. We'll miss him so much because he's such a character. But it, it had to happen and it's happened. It's done. Yeah. Um, I mean, I... I, I... At the time when when he left, I said Wigan probably won't miss him too much for his ability. Although he's you know he's a very good player, and we, we will miss him for his ability, but we'll miss him more for his unpredictability. And and, and oh, it's yeah. it's the characters of the game that it, it's a rare thing in sport. And and I think in rugby league we are blessed a little bit more than than the likes of football and and, and other sports like that to actually have characters. But Anthony Gelling was a one off, wasn't he? <laughs> he was. There's no other Anthony Gelling. There isn't, and I'm sure one day, you know, we'd love to all see him back at, at Wigan, uh, in, you know, whether it just be to come and watch a game or, or whatever that might be. Um, that leads, I guess, nicely, that, that leads left a big hole in, in the centre position of which Wigan replaced 
Anthony going before he officially left. I think that was probably one of the worst kept secrets of, uh, of the close yeah. season that, that Anthony Gallen was leaving. I guess the Wigan side is easy in some ga- in some regards to predict how we're going to line up in certain positions. You're going to have Gildart and Sargis in the centres and, and I guess the forwards will be whoever's in form and, and what have you. But I guess the, the key thing for the uh, the 2018 lineup is is halfbacks, fullback, hooker. We'll give the uh, we'll give the camera over to you. What's your who would you like to see at fullback and the halfbacks and, and the hooker the, the spine of the Wigan team in 2018? It's it's not a popular choice, but I'd like to see Sam start at fullback, having had a decent off season, having got his injuries behind him. I I, I want to see him there again because I don't think we saw the best of him last mm-hmm. year. I, I think he he was just coming into his own, and the season ran away from us. So, yeah. but if it was up to me for the moment, I keep Sam at fullback, yeah. um, and I I think Sam Powell has has deserved his shot at halfback now, and so I think oh. I'd pair up Williams and Powell, um, yeah. and and that would leave Escare who'd m- maybe stick him on the bench and and move things around a bit mid mid game. That that's where I'd be going with it, okay. but I'm not a coach. And neither am I, and, and neither of us profess to be experts. We are basically fans. So anybody that that is watching, let us know what your halfback combination would be. Just write it into the comments, send them through. We'll pop them on screen and, and give you uh, your two seconds of fame. Um, my my take, I, I think what you what you said is interesting. Actually, Powell at, at halfback is quite possibly um, something that a lot of people might have overlooked. I think that that's a very it's a very strong option that Sean Wayne might go down, mm-hmm. and that might be the the actual the way that he goes does go about it. I think the popular view would be Escare at fullback, Williams and Tompkins yeah. as your halfbacks, Lou Lawai and Powell as, as your two hookers, with Shorrox and Ganson getting whatever game time they probably can through the season. But I, I share your um, your sort of acknowledgement of Sam at, at fullback. I think he came out a few weeks ago and said that's where he wants to play, ideally, uh, if he had the chance. My, my biggest concern is, I think, whoever you play at the halfback, in, in the halfback role, whether that be Powell, Escaray, Esker, Tompkins, is the added defence that they're going to have to do. And, and that's my biggest concern about if Sam Tompkins moves to seven or six, is this added defence that he hasn't had to do since early parts of 2010 when he had six on the back of his shirt and I think he's got to look after his body as well and having big men running at him all the time through the game it's going to take its toll likewise it would on Escare um but I quite like Sam being hidden and he's you know he's a very good defender and he's very capable one-on-one of doing that but that would be my concern about putting Sam into um yeah into six or seven George Williams and Thomas Lulawai are probably two of the best tackling halfbacks you could ask for. Um, and I always make that point, but a friend that I go to the rugby with always points out that you don't want your halfbacks tackling, which is a very valid well, point, I guess. Fair point, yeah. <laughs> and in terms of the hooking role, who, who are you going for, a, a hooker? I think Lula I has to start at hooker. You know, we, yeah. we've seen what he can do at hooker. Um, and in a way, you know, you've, you've always got the options, priding everybody's fit. If everyone's fit, then you've got the options to, to shift people around a bit mid-game um, yeah. and, and give other people that chance and just freshen things up a bit, you know, on the 20-minute, 60-minute um, marks. Um, and and that, that will give us an idea of who is best suited to which position. But at the moment, I, th- I think Lula White's got to start hooker. Yeah, I agree. I think that's... Um... You know, it's probably a no-brainer. It's probably the one position out of that spine of the team that we're referring to that's probably nailed on uh, in terms of he's either going to start there or he's going to be on the bench. It does feel quite a bit like back in um, sort of 2010, 2011 when we can brought in Paul Deacon and we, we yeah. utilised Deacon uh, off the bench and you know when Brett Finch came in, they used to swap. If you think back to the 2011 Challenge Cup final, obviously Lulu, I went to Hooker later on in that game, scored mm-hmm. the winning try. And having that flexibility is something that perhaps Wigan haven't had over the past few years. Um, and it, is it a concern for you that we're having this conversation on the 12th of January and we don't know who, <laughs> who the halfbacks are? In my head, I've decided that Sean Wayne's got it all worked out. 
Yeah. In fact, in my head, I reckon he worked this out two years ago and he's been waiting okay. for this season to, to surprise us and amaze us with how brilliant it's going to be. I love your optimism. I mean, I thought... I was, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that, is, that is on a different level and, and I like it. I like it a lot. I think the, the other um, area is, is, you know, we, we, we talk of... Um, I mean, we've just got a, a comment here which we'll put on the screen, which is probably what we were going to talk about anyway, is, you know, Mark, what are your thoughts on the, the lack of signings for Wigan? We obviously signed one player that nobody's seen because he hasn't played a first-grade game. Gabe Hamlin. Well, two. We signed Dan Sargentson to, to sort of... And Sargentson, yeah. yeah. What, what are your thoughts on that? I, um, I, we've got a big squad. Yeah. We've got a big squad. And... The thing that excites me most, and I'm probably showing my age a bit here because I'm 45 now, so I'm getting a bit old and rusty. And what really excites me is seeing young players coming through. Yeah. And I think we do that like no other team. And somehow we've managed to do it successfully. So I'm happy just to have one or two. And people call these things project signings or whatever, but they they all seem to work out in the end. And I, I know I'm probably that's probably not the popular view at the moment, and there is this idea of oh, you know, you, you shouldn't be bringing back so many players that have left the club and are coming back to it. But I just think, how, how many players are there out there who are potentials that we could sign? And every time we sign somebody from elsewhere, is that blocking somebody coming up through the ranks? And and so I'm I'm happy at the moment. Give it yeah. six months, I'll tell you again. I might be miserable then. Yeah, I, do you know what? I think you're absolutely right. I don't think it's the popular view at all. I think there is this thing, uh, as Wigan fans, we want that you know, that marquee signing every year. You know, we, we've gone through years of being able to just go out and sign the likes of Matt and Afire or Trent Barrett, whoever it might be, and that, that's our name. But I think the, the ethos under Ian Lennigan over the past 10 years in particular is it has been that exactly what you, you said, bringing our own stars through. And that's that's the only way that they become stars is if they get the opportunity. You know, Sam Tompkins wouldn't have got his opportunity if Tim Smith didn't get injured in that game at Wakefield or whatever it was. You know, it, it is that opportunity. I think the thing that's been levelled at, uh, and again, going back to this um, interview with Chris Radlinski that Phil Wilkinson did, is this sort of old boys club feeling of we're bringing them back just because the you know the best mates with Sean Wayne which I think is unfair and I think that was labelled because of the Dan Sargenton signing but who else is available in December to sign as a centre that you're going to say exactly who who was that other signing going to be yeah who who was Sargenton whose place has he taken yeah, exactly. You know, he's taken a player that wanted to leave, as we've mentioned, for for the honourable reasons. You know, I think anybody in Anthony Gallen's position, you know, would have would have done exactly that. And it just so happens that let's not forget, Dan Sargent is or wasn't an England international only last year in the Four Nations at centre. So, you know, he's 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 not a bad player. Just I can understand people's frustrations with with Sargent's game at, at times, but I just think he's going on to into a centre position on the side that he prefers with that sidestep. I think mm -hmm. when he was on the opposite side, he basically sidestep kept taking him into touch. In fact, I know that sounds really yeah. simple and really, really stupid, but I, I do. I, he's a good solid player, and I, and I think you're absolutely right in terms of signings. We we have this tendency to want to just sign people for the sake of it, really. And I think that that's a, a, a mentality of, of being the first professional club and, and sort of developing through that. It, it's just ingrained in our DNA. But um, bringing youngsters through is, is definitely... Gabe Hamlin, you, you can't really comment on him because nobody's seen him, but that kind of project signing, what, what are your thoughts on that? It, it excites me. It yeah. excites me that, you know, we've brought this, this young lad over here he, he obviously he comes with a good reputation and mm. I'm excited to see what he's going to do because I I don't think they're idiots at Wigan. I don't think they're going to bring in some kid from halfway across the world just on a whim. I, no. I think we're going to see some really good stuff from him. Yeah, and to, and to go back, I guess the last young player that nobody had ever heard of that hadn't played a first grade game who we brought over from the sort of Australian New Zealand region wasn't too bad in the form of Anthony Gallen who we sort of no. keep going back to 
it is this project signing. That, that's a, a term that, that's banded about. But like you say, he comes highly recommended. Pat Richards and Michael Maguire both recommended him to Sean Wayne. And in terms of a recommendation, if Michael Maguire says he's worth taking a punt on, he's, te- he's worth taking a punt on. Yeah. Uh, finally, what we'll do is um, we'll probably just wrap this up with, with a quick conversation um, just on, on your thoughts on the, the new South Wales tour. Obviously, that's been... A thing that, again, going back to the Chris Radlinski interview with, with Phil Wilkinson, it's something that we're going to are advertising heavily. You know, there's a lot of effort gone into this. It's groundbreaking. I'm fortunate enough to be to go, going over there in February, and, I, and I'm looking forward to it. But I understand why a lot of people are sceptical and probably a bit frustrated on it. And again, we'd love to get people's comments on that in the in the comments box if if you want. But Matt, you, you take on on the New South Wales tour. I I think it's a brave move. And and I'll always applaud a brave move. Yeah. I am. Um, I, I live down here in Wiltshire in the wilds, so I I don't get to go to as as many games as I'd like to go to. Yeah. Um. So this was what a a, a whole game at home that I probably would have been able to go to, and so I feel particularly it's robbing me. But okay. having said that, it it's such an exciting idea. Right? Yeah. And if we can get that that kind of groundswell of interest in Australia, then maybe we'll see more of these signings that, that people want to get because of our relationship with clubs in America, in Australia. America, that's another thing, isn't it? Yeah, well, maybe that's a conversation for a completely <laughs> other night. Um, you know, I, I, I mean, we could probably spend hours on, on that. But, but yeah, back to Australia. <laughs> yeah. Um, you, you, you're lucky enough to be going. Yeah, I'm I not. I, I tried swinging it with my boss, but she wasn't having it. <laughs> uh, it's it's a little far to go for me. Um, I look forward to watching on telly. I think it's on Sky. Is it? Uh, yeah, I think I think it was just announced um, yesterday. The the timings mm-hmm. of it, Sky Sports Arena, the, the three games that are uh, that are being played over there. Um, are going to be shown. So, I, I mean, I, I think your point is interesting ra- rather than somebody that lives local to Wigan, you know, somebody that lives a, a decent distance away, and this is perhaps a game that you did earmark to go to. Um, it's a game that you've now lost, which, you know, mm-hmm. is certainly a cause of frustration, I guess, for, for a lot of fans, um, you know, around, around well, certainly around Wigan who are paid for the season tickets. Yeah, yeah. I, I, can, I can appreciate that. We, we've got another comment here, and, and it's about Romain Navarrete. I mean, neither of us, uh, on, unfortunately, <laughs> neither of us are qualified to answer that question. It's a great question. Uh, I mean, I've seen photographs of him training with the with the side up in Newcastle last week. So he's obviously training with the team. Um, I think the the understanding was that um, last year he got homesick. Um, and, and we're going to allow him to go back to Catalan. The fact that Catalan have now announced their squad numbers as of yesterday. Um, probably indicates that there might not be any room at the end for for a remain. Um, and if he, I guess, if he gets his head down and, and he feels comfortable and he, and he isn't homesick, then there's no reason why why he, you know he won't get his opportunity. He didn't play that many games last year, Matt. But what were your initial thoughts on on Navarrete last year? I, th- I thought it was a, it was a solid young prop. He a um, little bit rusty in areas, I think. Defensive technique sometimes let him down a little bit, but he he seemed like a good solid forward at a time when we needed good solid forwards. And I was actually yeah. quite sad to see him go back over to France. You know, yeah, I mean, cause... you, you obviously went at the time um, that Louis Tierney um, went over there as well, and I think he played, you know, he played pretty much every game that he was available for for Catalan. Nothing special, but I think he's still a very young prop, isn't he? So to to get to get that kind of uh, to get that kind of performance um, from a young prop, it, you know, we're probably asking too much if we if we did want you know world beating performances. My real issue with him is what's wrong with Wigan. I mean, I, I mean, what's Wigan got that Catalan hasn't? Please let let's not go there. I mean, again, that 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 could take up two hours. Never mind one hour. <laughs> uh, this uh, of the three questions that we've had on our um, on our sort of beta trial show tonight. This is my favourite one from from Jack. Can you see that question, Matt? I can't. I can't see anything. I see yeah, no yeah, questions. Okay. So the guy on the left, which is you, Matt, has a lovely jumper on. Where did he buy it from? Uh, it did... 
Hang on. Weird fish. Weird fish. There you go, Jack. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. It is, uh, it's nice, isn't it? It's good, that. Yeah, he says it looks like a big fitting. He seems to like it. I think he might be taking <laughs> it a little bit. But thanks, Jack, for your uh, for your contribution. It's much appreciated um, on that. Um, just to go back to sort of just rounding back up on the, the New South Wales talk, how much do you think this is going to affect Wigan and, and Hull? Bearing in mind that Wigan play on the Saturday night against South Sydney and the following Friday away at Warrington. Surely you can't expect to win that game at Warrington. That That is the thing that troubles me most about it. Um, because I hate losing to Warrington. Absolutely hate it. And I think it does make us vulnerable. But then, if you think back over the years, how many times have we gone to a place like Warrington thinking, oh, well, we're bound to lose this. And we lose it, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but then there are the times when we win as well. Um, and I, I'm just going to be completely optimistic about everything this season because the season hasn't started yet. So I'm, I'm going to wait for that Warrington game and I'm going to okay. assume we're going to win and I'm going to keep my fingers crossed and cry if we don't. You can, you, you can almost write the headlines now, though, can't you? If, if we can yeah. struggle against Salford, struggle against Sydney, get back to South City, and then you've got that game at Warrington. And, it, you know, it could obviously it could go completely the, the opposite way and we win the first three games and we go to Warrington and then we blame jet lag or, or whatever. Um what you know it's a dangerous it's a dangerous ploy from Wigan. I mean, you know, we've got to applaud, like you said, the uh the tenacity of Wigan uh to go out there and, and hold and, and play that game. Um but that that is a concern I guess for, for everyone is, is how that's gonna affect us going on. Particularly looking back at last year, the Corolla game played over here, it probably took a lot out of us um throughout yeah. the season, to be honest with you. Um in terms of, we're probably going to wrap it up, uh, I, I guess now. Thank you, everybody, for, for joining us. Like I said, this is a new venture for myself and WiganRugbyFans.com. We love your interactions. There's about 10 people at this moment in time that have sent emails through, including Matt, that want to be part of this. And over the next week, what we're going to be doing is maybe scheduling some, some shows uh, previews, um, probably for the Scholars game and the Centurions game next week, match reviews, and any topics that, that come up or, or any topics that, that we feel and you feel as, as, as the rest of the fans um, that you want to discuss on here. We want this um, to, to be a, an interaction. I'm reading Craig's comments at the moment, uh, and when you go off here, Matt, you can have a laugh at them. I feel like Craig might be trying to take this on a tangent about talking about glaciers now and trains. Um, but but some of some of the people like Matt who um, who is uh, who has been in touch with us. Obviously, Matt is an author. You said there's about twenty books left, maybe at the Wigan store. I think there's so, about twenty to thirty books left in in the Wigan shop. So if I if think. you do want to read Matt's book. Best thing to do: like this video and share it on your pro on your Facebook page, and we'll do the draw later on. Otherwise, get yourself down to Warriors World, and you've probably got nineteen opportunities left uh, to to buy this book that is uh, which way that way um, to to buy um, Matt's book. Um, just to mention a couple of the people that have been in touch, and I think this is really exciting. Actually, we're, we're going to have some journalists and and, and some ex players on here um, later on in the season. The people that have shown an interest. In it, but there's a couple of guys that I want to, to mention who are really, really interesting, and hopefully we'll get on over the next couple of weeks. And, and probably with yourself, Matt, we'll probably have a few people on here. Um, we've got Mark from Super League Pod, um, which is a fantastic podcast. If anybody's ever looking to listen to anything uh, in a car or on a long journey, Super League Pod will probably keep you laughing for a long time. Um, but Mark is the the Wigan contingent on there, uh, and he was unavailable for tonight. But we'll get him on as soon as possible um, because I think his insight is, is going to be really useful for us. Um, there's a gentleman called Ted who got in touch last night as well. He used to work on Try Time for BBC Radio Merseyside. His insight, I think, will be fantastic. Um, and there's a guy um, who got in touch last night called Ron, whose granddad used to play for Wigan. His granddad was Bert Barnes who plays, I think, around about the 1920s. When I had a look today, he's got heritage number two, 255, which is incredible. 
Um, so we, we look forward to, to Ron joining us at some point in the future as well. And I, I think his, his insight and perhaps stories from his, from his granddad and, and going down to Central Park will be, will be very interesting. So Matt, thank you so, so much for, for taking the time out of your Friday night. I'm sure you desperate to go and watch Coronation Street or something now. Um, and, and guys, thanks a lot for your interaction. Um, like I said, this is the first one. It's a trial run. It went okay, I guess, and we'll be doing more of these. Um, so thank you, everybody, so much, uh, and we'll, we'll speak to everybody soon, uh, probably in the next week. So thanks, guys. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, Matt.